Oh, there it is. Master Beast. Mr. Beast. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll have no idea what's going on. We're playing Mist. They know it's what the book says. What are we looking at? I, I don't know. You made me skip the intro. I don't know what this game is. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, it's Mist. <laughs> it's supposed to be a mystery. Is it? The fuck is this? <laughs> I'm doing it again. I have to know what the intro is. <laughs> Eh? Go into the fissure. Starry expanse, of which I had only a fleeting glimpse. I've tried to speculate where it might have landed, but I must admit that such conjecture is futile. Still, questions about whose hands might one day hold my misbook are unsettling to me. I know my apprehensions might never be allayed, and so I close, realizing that perhaps the ending has not yet been written. No. <laughs> okay, so the intro didn't matter. Still have no good, idea what the hell's going good on. Good job restarting this game a fifth time. It's the Island of Mist. Can I click on it? We're going. Ooh, in order to start this game, you have to click on something. Well, then there are point and clicks. Clicks. No! <laughs> Have the She's like, you wouldn't hit a cat with glasses, would you? <laughs> Speaking of mist, here's Misty with her shaved tummy. She came back from the vet. She got our lady parts taken out. Yeah. Wow. She got an infection. Had to do emergency. Yeah. Anyways. I'm thinking classic mist because yeah. She's playing too. She's the hired help. Hi, Misty. Okay. Back to business. All right, go. Crazy. So, from what I know of this, it's like a big escape room island puzzle thing. I think. Executive bathroom, escape room island. <laughs> yeah. First I'm gonna look around and make sure the water graphics don't crash the encoding. <laughs> so far so good. I mean, to be honest, not the worst water graphics I've seen. They're pretty good actually. I could show you the worst. Oh. <laughs> not the worst graphics we've ever seen <laughs> of the aquatic variety. What would the worst water graphics we've ever seen be? Legends Arceus. <laughs> I was gonna say that too. <laughs> Dude. They could have done better. I guess I'll walk up to this fucking switch or something. What's this do? Okay. Yes? Down? Down further? No? Up some more? Did it open this? Okay, I don't know what this does. Okay, then just leave it. Pull it up. Pull it up? Yeah. Okay, we'll leave it up. And then we'll leave it that way. We'll go upstairs. Oh, that made me dizzy. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. It's a shame I can't play this in 1080. Oh. A shame or a blessing? <laughs> Could be a blessing. Oh, what's this? Pull it up. Another lever. Open? Pull it up. Open? Pull it up and back off. Pull go away. What's this gear for? I bet the levers cause that to move because that seems obvious. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> no, pull the levers up. Pull the levers up. Why are you getting stuck on this? Jeez. I was just looking. I don't know what to do. <laughs> go down those damn stairs. Down? Yes. Go over here. What the fuck is this? Oh. Whoa. Fancy. Oh, I don't like the looks of this. This is giving me Lisa Trevor vibes. Oh, it's a fairy fountain. Neat. Whoa. Uh... It Alchemy? Seems like a fairy fountain that belongs to a Daedra. Yeah, kinda. What, what is, is this? That? Settings, dimensional imager. Oh. Topographical extrusion test. 
topography. Topographical is not what that word says. Top topographical? Topographical? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Words. Oh, we should probably write this shit down. It's one of those games. Ow. Sketchpad. That'll work. Because then we can also sketch things that we need to remember. Oh, God. It's what you get. It's what you get for trying to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he doesn't fit there. Here's a bunch of big ass fucking words for you to write down. <laughs> so, at least we're not playing more land or else there'd be a lot more writing. Yet. Ta da! I did see a bunch of people suggesting we play that. <laughs> I almost spelled turbulent without an R. Tubulent. Tubulent. <laughs> Tubulent. I almost did it again. <laughs> Tubulin, dude! Can I take? No? What's this be? Oh my god. Oh, this is where those numbers come in. Uh -huh. Before I do anything, let's take a look around. Probably. Oh, what's this? Tic tac toe? Oh, what'd I do? I broke it. It's making danger noises. This is a funny room. You're a funny room. No, you're just funny. Thanks. I guess. Well, let's see what this doohickey does. What's it say? We don't know what it is. 67. Okay, so it's water tubulent pool. <laughs> we want marker switch diagram? I don't know. Sure. 47. What'd that do? Oh! That's the thing. Okay. Okay, well. Whoa! Hello. Uh, hey, it's a fucking doohickey out there. So it's a lever in the up position. So it is. Alright. Cool. I don't get this. Alright, so 40. Okay. I guess if you want to try that as well. Why not? This is... Topographical. Uh, what's your jigger? Oh, do you mean 3D map? Yeah, it means 3D map. Whoa! Mountain. Okay. That's, that's a good mountain. <laughs> Alright, moving on. I assume it's the island. Let's take it back to 47. I guess everything needs to go in the up position. Let's find out. So, I guess there's another one somewhere? Oh, I'm sure there's several. Shut up. There's one. He's down. Come up. Wait, is that one shaped differently? I don't know. Page No. <laughs> I've left for you a message of utmost importance in our four chamber beside the dock. Enter the number of marker switches on the silent into the imager to retrieve the message. Yours, Atris. What kind of a name is Atris? One that rhymes with mattress. <laughs> Word. <laughs> okay, so enter the number of marker switches on this island. Oh. Oh. Okay. So there's three that we know of here. Let's go ahead and switch this one up. Hmm? Oh, it's the dentist office. I hate the dentist. Yep, gonna get in the chair. Oh, it's a fucking time machine. Okay. Uh, I don't want this yet. I don't want that kind of responsibility. <laughs> I don't know oh, what yeah. I do. Okay, bye. You accidentally turned the light <laughs> off before leaving a public bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it off when I walk in. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Literally. This ain't my house. <laughs> so I'm assuming all these switch dudes. There's a lot of stuff here. It's the boat on the dock. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna. Go around. Whoop. Can I not walk past? No. I'm guessing not. Oof. Oh. Just have to hold it. And that's four. Four? There's a fifth one down here. Sixth one down here. Yeah, that one. And okay, the clock says missed. Oh, it's a clock puzzle. Oh, oh, I don't know that yet. Seven? Seven switches. Whoa. I don't know what this is, let's see. 
Oh, this is where they make the uh, Shinra soldiers. Okay. What's in that building? You didn't get. Oh, it's the shit house. Mm. This is some Resident Evil shit. Nobody's home. Ding dong. Whoa, what the fuck is this? Ah, what'd I do? <laughs> okay. Oh. oh. Okay. Power to ship. Generator switches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That say 88. It does. Oh, is this one of those, like, math puzzles? 10 makes 9. Math. <laughs> 9 makes 19. Okay, I guess we'll write this down. 8 is 22. 7 is 2. 6 is 1. 5 is 5. Makes sense. Makes sense. The science took that. Whoa. 4 is 16. 3 is 8. 2 is 7. And 1 is 10. 88 is an even number. What buttons do you think we could press? And each button can only be pressed once, so. C. Ah. Meh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> With um, the 10. I believe we overloaded it. How did it overload it? Uh oh. Now the second one doesn't move. So it says 2, 9, 8, 5, 4. 2 and 1. 2, 1. Okay, so we got one of them there. <laughs> I guess we have to go find a way to, to reset the generator. Okie dokie. Well, at least we know what to do. Yeah. Alright. So that was neat. Let's go! Move it on! Uh, let's stick to counting these switchy things. Oh, what was it, seven? Yes. Yes. Pick up. Eight. What's in here? See an eighth one? Whoa. A spaceship. Can you go down here? Ooh. What a view. I think there's a ladder right there. So there is. There is. Okay. Oh, that looks dangerous. Let's not touch that <laughs> over here. I totally tried. Boing! Uh -huh. What's in here? Nothing. Oh. Keeping it up. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Going in there. The library. Yeah. It's this tower rotation. Oh, why would I rotate the tower? I don't know. So I'll stop doing it. Whatever. Page. Oh. Book. Okay. Into the book you go. Page for book.com. What the hell? Who are you? You look like the devil. The end. Oops. Uh, it probably because you're in a book. Chewbacca. <laughs> Somebody help Leo DiCaprio. He's stuck in a book. Hello. Hi. Okay, this is pointless. Yeah. Uh, uh. Okay. Seems legit. Oh! I opened the door. Um, Behind the bootcase. Uh, what is this, Ocarina of Time? Oh. Oh, so if I open the bookcase, that closes behind me, huh? Confirm? Uh, Confirm. Nice, nice. It's a blue one. Oh god, it's him again. I think that's a different dude. They have the same facial hair? They sound different. Oh yeah, he is a little different. His head is whiter. 
Okay. I'm assuming we need more pages <laughs> to actually hear what he's saying. So fireplace. I oh, probably don't want to go in the fireplace. Uh. <laughs> huh? Okie dokie. Are you gonna kill us? <laughs> <laughs> I'll check back later. Get out of the fireplace before we die. <laughs> Stop playing in the fireplace. <laughs> What's on the bookshelf? Oh. Oh god. Oh jeez. I have called this age Channelwood, and it is a very different world. Though it is exactly how I imagined it, it is still amazing to see it with my own eyes. Water covers this age as far as I can see except for a small rocky island. Elsewhere, there are only trees which grow directly out of the water. Uh -huh. A myriad of thin wooden passageways are built just above the water and disappear into the forest. I assume they were built some time ago, for they appear aged. I am eager to discover more about this land and its people, but I have arrived here late and I must rest. People. I was awakened this morning by strange noises coming from the pathway adjacent to the one on which I had slept. I saw a group of monkey-like people heading in my direction. They had not seen me yet. I did not feel threatened by their presence. Their response to me was one that I would have never expected. After staring at me for a short time, they fell to their knees and began what appeared to be some sort of ceremonial worship. I tried to speak to them, but they did not understand my language. Instead, they indicated through enthusiastic hand motions that I was to follow them. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry! As we walked, I began to notice that the waters below us were changing colors. Slowly, subtly, they would change from deep blue to muddy orange, then from muddy orange to beautifully clear. I was so intrigued by the water I hardly noticed that we had arrived at the ladder. At a ladder. Climbing the ladder led us to their village which is about 10 meters above the water and can only be reached by rope ladders that stretch from the lower paths to the village level approximately halfway at the Grand Trees. That's way too descriptive of a sentence. Whoosh. It is very interesting watching these people carry out their daily tasks. Even after watching them for hours, I did not understand exactly what they were doing. At sunset, they motioned for me to follow them. I followed the creatures to the doorway of an enormous hut. Strangely, once inside, I found that the hut appeared even larger than it had from the outside. The walls were garnished with bright metals and in the center of the hut sat the leader of these people. At least he appeared to be their leader, for he sat a meter off the floor in a thick throne. Sounds leader-like to me. The guards surrounded the strong creature who was dressed in many exotic, colorful fabrics. Next to the leader sat a very old human. At least to some extent he appears human. His hair, which was only on his face and head, which is usually where it is, was completely gray, almost white, and hung very long around his frail body. His thin head hung limply by an almost grotesque neck that could not hold its head up to look at me. But what a surprise, this creature could speak my language. It's because it's a human. Shortly thereafter, I was given a bed with some hand motions that looked to be telling me to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to learning more. As I suspected. <laughs> it's like somebody writing an essay, like 5,000 words, you say. <laughs> Yeesh. As, uh. as I suspected, the ancient creature is a human. But he is old beyond his own reckoning and seems almost insane. However, the tree dwellers almost revere him as a god. They are treating me now in the same fashion, which makes me feel very uncomfortable. It is almost impossible to understand this old man. His voice is feeble but wild. <laughs> Where was it? I lost my place. <laughs> he has adopted so much of the language of the tree dwellers. He himself told me that he had not spoken our own tongue in ages. He attempted to explain to me the history of this place. The following is my best translation of what he has told me. Meaning it's probably wrong. If you put translation in quotes, it's probably wrong. Or at least half right. Mm. Or wrong. Quarter. <laughs> Quarter right. 
Many years ago, the humans and the tree dwellers lived together in this place, which was then a vast island. They interacted very little. The humans dwelt on the ground and the tree dwellers lived high above the humans. Occasionally, the island was disturbed by mysterious rumblings which happened randomly. Some sort of tectonic or volcanic action, I suspect. Just... Or someone moving a tower. <laughs> or an oil drill. Well. The sometimes slight, sometimes heavy tremors would only last a short time. Then they would stop, allowing everything to return to normal. Uh-huh. One day, things changed. The rumbling began and grew quickly. To unprecedented levels. Soon it became apparent that the entire island was sinking slowly into the ocean around them. Lucky you. Many of the humans died that day, but not before sacrificing themselves in order to stop the sinking of the island. How? What? Did, did they... Many humans died that day, but not before sacrificing themselves. That means they died before that day. To stop the sinking of the island whenever it sank. They were already dead when it sank. This guy's dumb. What? <laughs> Quick, link hands and become a buoy. <laughs> uh, the humans who lived through this catastrophe moved into the trees where they gradually died out. Maybe because they were unequipped for such an environment, but I'm not sure. I don't think that would happen. Humans adapt pretty well, in my opinion. <laughs> Unless they were dumb. <laughs> Uh, this is the story the old man communicated to me, although many details are very unclear in my mind. Like how they made a giant buoy chain out of bodies. <laughs> I am especially confused as to how the humans saved the island from completely sinking. In fact, whoops. In fact, I doubt the accuracy of that part of the story. The island must have been stopped on its own. Yet the old man believes in the truth of the story as if he had been there. And the tree dwellers worship him, and apparently all humans... As if, as if he slash they were heroes or gods. Huh. Hmm? Okay. The old man ended our conversation today with an event which I will never forget. He began gripping my hands tightly, murmuring something about rest and asleep. He then said, we had expected you to come sooner. These actions filled me with a sort of immediate dread. With much effort, he stood to his feet. I tried to help, but he pushed me away with the force, with more force than I imagined his frail body contained. The tree dwellers quietly surrounded him with very solemn faces. They then kneeled before him. He walked to each and placed his hand on their heads. All the while, he murmured words which I did not understand. Finally, he turned to me and smiled. Then he closed his eyes and walked out the door and off the narrow path high in the trees. The tree dwellers were silent. They began a procession down the nearest rope ladder. As I was descending, I saw several of them pick up the body he had fallen onto a lower level of walkway and carry it away. <laughs> okay. Yaw, walk the plank. <laughs> he was laying down at the dead end of a short pier-like structure. Fuck. <laughs> With the use of some potion, one of the tree creatures lit the pier on fire and I watched as the flames engulfed him. As the strange funeral proceeded, the waters around the pier changed to dull green. This morning I awoke, finding it hard to even believe the previous evening's events. The water is a dull green for as far as I can see now. For some reason, the water no longer shifts color. As I wander throughout the pathways, the creatures watch me, curious to see what I will do next. They are constantly offering me strange objects of affection. I even found food outside the doorway to the room in which I had slept. This is a unique race of beings. I hope to learn their language soon so that I may learn more from them. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anywho. Moving on. I have lived on this world for three months, off and on, and the tree dwellers have shown great hospitality. I am even beginning to learn bits of their language. I have decided to return home for an extended stay with my loving wife and my sons, and hopefully return with them. However, I am sure Catherine will once again refuse. I think this age would be a wonderful experience for them all, and I at least look forward to how Cirrus and Akinar will react to his curious to its curious inhabitants. Cirrus and Akinar. Okay. Okay. So it is a time machine. 
Catherine is staying behind as expected. My sons have returned with me and they enjoy this age very much. They get along very well with the tree dwellers and are picking up their language surprisingly fast. I have no doubt that it will not be too long until they can speak with the tree dwellers much better than myself. I am leaving tomorrow to check on Osmoyan age. Sirius has suggested that I allow him and his brother to stay, though the idea unsettles me. I know the boys are growing up rapidly. The hospitality of these creatures is such that I could think of no better place to leave them alone for a short while, so I will consent to their request. I warn the boys not to take advantage of the respect of the tree dwellers. Take advantage of the respect the tree dwellers have for their ideas. They seem to understand my warning, and I have faith they will follow it. However, <laughs> Much to my dismay, upon arriving in Everdunes, I learned that Pran and her people are continuing to be menaced by the Choctic? Choctic? I fear for their survival and plan on returning to her shortly after checking on Cirrus and Akinar here. See Everdunes journal for more information. After watching Cirrus and Akinar, I see they are handling things very well, and I think I can put to rest any fears about leaving them in Channelwood again. And for a little longer time. Why is it in black ink? <laughs> He's got one of them multicolor pants, it <laughs> seems. <laughs> the tree dwellers seem slightly distressed that I am leaving, but are happy that Sirius and Akinar are staying behind again. I have been gone for over three days and have been to many different places. Three days? Whoa. Oh, wow. I had to tell Sirius and Akinar about Pran's death today, and they were visibly shaken, although they only remembered her from their childhood. Catherine has suggested that it would be wise for Sirius and Echinar to leave Oops. Channelwood for a while, and I have to and I have to agree. They will be returning with me again once I leave. I have told my sons that they will be returning with me in two days. They spent the entire night telling me of an adventure they experienced in my absence, and it was rather remarkable. It seems they constructed a boat with the creatures and traveled some ways out into the surrounding waters. I enjoy hearing them talk excitedly of their adventures and am reminded of my own adventures as a child. I finally understand why the tree dwellers have been giving me their many inks. Ah, that's why they're different colors. <laughs> giving me their many inks and insisting I write with them. Looking through some of my past entries, I see now that the inks have changed from the black, I thought they were, to various different colors. I have shown some of the creatures my journal I have shown some of the creatures my journal, and they laughed and howled. I did not know they had such a sense of humor. Even now, I look through this very colorful journal, I cannot help but laugh myself. Hilarious. This guy's bored. We will be returning tomorrow, so my sons are with the creatures for the last night here. They have told me they would like to come to Channelwood again, and also asked if they can visit some other ages alone. Though I will have to think over the request, I believe they have proven to me that they are trustworthy and responsible. Catherine will also have to help me decide whether they are ready for travel alone. For now, I must give my farewells to the creatures, for I do not know how long it will be until I visit this age again. <sighs> Wordy. The end. Future bridge. You know, that ain't, uh, being like special, super secret ink reminds me of uh, your character that you made in Legend of the Five Rings. Oh yeah, with my magic tattoos. Mm -hmm. Pretty with, cool stuff. With your ink that you never really looked into where you got it or what it did, you just kind of used it without questioning it. Yeah. Yeah. It and pretty, it was weird. It's pretty weird. Oh. I know why they're different colors. Because some of it's important and some's not? No, because all of the words that are, like for instance, all the words that are in black actually lead on to the entries that are in black. So like that's why this sentence right here is black. It's because it says, I hope to learn their language soon so that I may learn more from them. And then it goes in for a little longer time. Huh. I guess it doesn't really make sense. But does it? Well, I don't really care about, about piecing it together right now. So. How long was that book? <laughs> well, I'm glad most of these are burned. <laughs> oh, 
Right. Oh no, we'll come back to We'll this. come back to this library here. <laughs> I feel like that's enough reading for one episode. Yeah. It's almost enough anything for one episode. Alright. How many levers were there? Eight? Eight. As far as what we found. I don't think there's anywhere else to go to find them. Guess what? Save. Flash. Oh yeah. Definitely save. Save. Whoa. Whoa. That's pretty cool. <gasps> Cliffhanger! Ta da So, what do you think so far? Aside from the book part. <laughs> um, so I know what you think about the book part. It's a mystery. Bye. 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 <laughs>